Aleph has a massive range of microcontrollers and fusion processors, spanning from the low power E1C all the way up to the high performance E7 and even the new E8 range. We're going to chat all about the specs and maybe, just maybe, you'll find your dream microprocessor, one that's capable of generative AI. I'm joined today by Henrik and we're doing some Aleph homework where I'm going to be learning about sort of the broad range of Aleph microcontrollers that there are out there. So we, we usually talk about a sort of graph of scalability, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa hold there. Only 12% of you are subscribed. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for daily engineering content. All right. So down this end, we've got this. And as we go along, we're talking about an increase in performance, right? Correct. Where do we start here? So when we are over on this side of the line, uh, the product families that we have that are sort of, I mean, I, I don't want to say that they're underperforming or that they're right. not able to do work, but they're really designed for the type of applications where you sleep a lot, mm -hmm. you wake up every once in a while and you do a little bit of data collecting or something like that. Yeah. So you don't need a ton of computational research, uh, resources mm -hmm. to work with that data. And we have a series of devices called the E1C. It's essentially right. even compact. Okay, cool. And uh, the C is specifically for kind of referring to the size of the devices. Mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to make them physically very small so that they can fit in tight spaces and on you know PCBs that go into you know very small things like you know this small ring that I'm wearing, for instance. Right. And as we go up from E1C to slightly larger devices, we end uh, end up with the E1 series. So down this end, what are the sort of applications that we see here? Where are you going to see uh, 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 an application where you've got something that's sleeping for quite a while, waking up, taking some measurements, going back to sleep? Where, where would you use an E1 or an E1C? So, I mean, if you think about any type of application that involves periodic collecting of data mm -hmm, from sensors, mm -hmm. for instance, yeah. uh, where you usually have to wake up and you have to acquire that data. And in some cases, you do a little bit of processing of it, but for the most part, it's more about collecting that data uh, at some kind of interval. Mm -hmm. So these, these are sort of the low, low power solutions. Exactly. Well, great. we actually pride ourselves on the way that we've designed our devices where we have, um, in, in all aspects of our silicon, we have been able to um, optimize certain parts of the system for efficiency when it comes to um, both active mode as well as sleep mode. But for sure, these type of devices are going to spend most of their time in some kind of low power state when they're not actually doing any work. Right, and then skipping all the way up to here, what's at the top of the line performance with Aleph? The top of the line performance um, is a series that we call E8. E8, yep. And E8 is quite the powerhouse. Mm -hmm. So in an E8 device, you have two microcontroller cores. Mm -hmm. One of them is optimized for power efficiency and the other one is optimized for performance. And in addition to those two microcontroller cores, you have two microprocessor cores uh, based on Cortex-A32, mm -hmm. which is capable of running high-level operating systems like a Linux system, for instance. Yep. And then you have three NPUs. In three the NPUs. Yeah. yeah. So you can run three neural networks at the same time and you have these four cores that are ready to crunch, you know, all kinds of numbers along with that uh, machine learning performance. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a, it's a lot of computational power in a very, very small space. Yeah. And sort of where are the applications that you'll see these Aleph controllers going in at the top of the line? The type of applications that need the kind of performance that the E8 provides usually involve uh, a combination of workloads. So mm -hmm. for the NPUs, obviously, uh, they're tailored towards neural networks, um, either CNN or RNN type networks, or even transformer-based networks, because we have a mm -hmm. uh, new NPU class in the E8 devices called the Ethos U85 that can, has support for hardware accelerating those types of networks. Also, between the cores, um, what we see that a lot of our customers are using them for is, you know, obviously embedded systems tend to involve some kind of data collecting, even if it's, you know, a high performance device or a more kind of power efficient device. Sure. But 
for instance, an E8, if you're acquiring uh, images through one of the image sensors, for instance, mm -hmm. you can run an algorithm on one of the MPU cores maybe to perform some kind of compression uh, of that image at the same time as you're you know, looking at it using a machine learning model to try to identify what is in frame, uh, maybe playback of video, maybe rendering of graphics on screens, and essentially just the combination of all of these different types of work um, that can be done at the same time at the various systems. In the mm -hmm. So we, we skipped over the hardware on this side as well. Would you write, so we've got two MCU cores here, two NPU cores, and three NPUs at the top of the line with, the, with the E8 range. Mm -hmm. E1, what are we dealing with down here in terms of hardware? In E1 devices, we have one uh, computational core. It is a Cortex-M55 MCU core. And then uh, we also use uh, the Ethos U55 NPU mm -hmm. in these systems as well. So we've seen what's up this end. You know, these are high performance applications, two MCUs, two NPUs, three NPUs, image applications. It's for performance combination workloads. Yes. That's a lot. Down here, we've got a, a lower power solution, something where we're just doing occasional data collection, waking up, going to sleep, your traditional lower power microcontroller with the addition of a U55 NPU. Correct. What's in the middle? There is a bunch of things <laughs> in the middle. So we go from the E1C, Mm -hmm. to the E1, and then from there we do a little bit of a jump, and we end up at a device that we call E3. Yep. And the E3 has two MCU core, and a really cool thing that we did with the E3, since we have these two microcontroller cores, we decided to optimize one of them specifically for power efficiency. How do you do that? Is it totally different hardware? Mm, essentially, the way that we did the silicon on that side of the chip has been done using different types of gate technologies and things mm -hmm. like that, just so that we can keep the power consumption as low as possible, even when that core is doing work. So right. we can't run that core as fast as we can run the high performance core on the other side. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference in clock frequency on them. The efficiency core is clocked at 160 megahertz versus the high performance 400 megahertz. But the idea is that the main part of your duty cycle when you're kind of pulling data into the system or you're looking mm -hmm. for some kind of event, some kind of trigger, you do that on the efficiency side of the chip so you can last longer on a battery. And mm -hmm. then when you discover whatever the trigger is, whatever the event is that you're looking for, you can switch over to the high performance core. You can very quickly figure out, you know, exactly what it was that happened. If it's, you know, take an example, a glass break sensor. Mm -hmm. You have an algorithm on the high efficiency core that is just listening for any kind of sound. Doesn't yep. really matter what it is, but then once the sound is something present, has to process it, right? Yeah, you yep. switch over to the high performance core because you quickly want to find out was that glass breaking or was it just you know something else, a car driving by outside, a dog barking or whatever. Yeah, amazing. And then you know if you can do that detection really quickly, you can go to sleep sooner and you can last longer on the battery. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's coming next? So after the E3, we move up to E5. Mm -hmm. uh, E5 adds, it has the same configuration in terms of an efficiency side and a performance side as the E3, but we add a Cortex-A32 MPU core into the system. Right, is that a higher performance core than the U55? It's even higher performance. It runs all the way up to 800 megahertz. And right. since this is a microprocessor core, it also opens up the ability for you to run something like a Linux-based system Right, in okay. combination with the microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. So now you can draw from that software ecosystem. If you're looking for um, a graphic stack or some advanced industrial networking protocol mm -hmm. or something like that for your application, you can now combine that with you know, the MPUs and the MCU capabilities yeah, uh, fantastic. in the same package. So before we're doing here, we've got our traditional microcontroller uh, real-time operating systems that you're running with your Visual Studio stack. Correct. And then after this, you have the opportunity to run Linux. You don't have to, no, really? but you have the opportunity now to run Linux. Yes. Fantastic. That is correct. And then from the E5, we go up to E7. Um, and E7 is same configuration as E5, but with two Cortex-A32 cores mm -hmm. for maximum performance. So the A32 cores in this system are configured for symmetric operation, which means that you will run, if you run an operating system, there's one kernel, but it just has more cores to dispatch threads onto. Yep, right? yep, yep. So it executes out of the same level two cache. And then 
as I mentioned, on the top of the line, we have an E8, but we also have an E6 and an E4 that I didn't mention because they're new. Yeah, and there is actually, like that. Yeah, exactly. And they're, they're versions of the E3 and the E5, but we have added this Ethos U85 NPU. So this is sort of where they sit. You've yeah. got... Actually, they're, they're sort of completely different, aren't they? Because your whole sort of proposition with these is that you can run generative AI on them. Exactly. So do, we, do we even put them on, on the same axis? or? <laughs> Well, we do because we've designed them to be compatible with the existing, the odd-numbered ensemble devices. Mm -hmm. But we've just essentially optimized a couple of things in those systems. We made it possible to use multiple camera inputs at the same time. Mm -hmm. We've significantly increased the memory bandwidth with mm -hmm. which we can saturate the new Ethos U85 NPU, specifically so that we can cover also these generative AI workloads mm -hmm. uh, in a microcontroller form factor. Amazing. So I feel like we're forgetting something. It starts with a B, right? Last year, we introduced a product that is essentially based on the digital specification of this E1 device mm -hmm. that we call B. One. So the B1 is our first wireless microcontroller. And we wanted to make sure that we base that on one of the very, very sort of lo lowest possible power configuration mm -hmm. of the ensemble devices, because most BLE type systems run on batteries and therefore, you know, being able to control the power consumption is extremely important. Um, so low power, um, BLE, 5.3, software upgradable to 5.4, mm -hmm. uh, all of the features of that uh, communication protocol supported, and also with integrated support for uh, hardware accelerated. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you still have an NPU on this. Yeah, exactly, Great. there's an NPU in there. So for the first time in a BLE type device, you can actually uh, use you know fully connected neural networks at the same time as you're using wireless communication at very, very low power consumption. And that's all in the B1. Correct. There's nothing, this, is, this isn't a new, this isn't a new release from Aleph. This is, the existing B1 is currently your Bluetooth microcontroller with an integrated NPU that's all very low power. 100% correct. Fantastic, we've gone through Aleph's sort of full range as we know it right now. So maybe we'll finish up here. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks very much for joining me today. Eh? Are you going to add the arrow? Yes, I am. Oh, that's there too good. There we go. <laughs> Bit of romance in the IPX studio today. It's Henrik, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Go check out our website to learn more about the broad range of Aleph Fusion processors. If you have a project coming up that needs to be low power, but have the power of AI inference at your fingertips, get in contact with us by filling in a board form and applying to evaluate this technology. Like, subscribe, and as always, stay disruptive.